Thank you, Emmanuel. I'll go through the main lower urinary tract dysfunction in patients with spinal cord injury. Again, um, no disclosures. The function of the lower urinary tract is very simple, to store and to void. However, the control of the lower urinary tract this is complex, and this is nicely shown by the illustrator of Lancet Neurology, just symbolizing the kidney as a brain. It is a multi-level process involving the cerebral part, the spinal and peripheral part. There are about 15 to 53 new patients suffering from spinal cord injury per million in Western countries. Most of these patients will develop neurogenic lower urinary tract dysfunction. And be aware, the neurourological issues belong to the highest health priorities of these patients. Spinal cord injury is classified according to the American Spinal Injury Association. Here it is um, the Asia Impairment Scale, the ACE. ACE A means sensory and motor complete injury. B means sensory incomplete and motor complete injury. C and D are different grades of motor incompleteness. And then ACE E means normal. It means not that this patient does have had any symptoms, only in the case that you suffered from spinal cord injury and that you completely recovered, it will be graded as ACE E. And the most important issue to consider here is that the Asia impairment scale is considering sensory and motor function, but it is not considering the autonomic function. It is a sensory motor classification, not including the autonomic system. The lesion level of spinal cord injury, typically it is between the infrapontine and supra sacral part, a suprasacral spinal cord injury lesion. In the acute phase, also called spinal shock, you will have a hypo or a contractile detrusor. And it always will raise the question, what is the duration of spinal shock phase? This is a honestly unsolved problem. We don't know what is the exact time of the spinal shock. There may be days, there may be months. There are no high-level evidence studies on that issue. However, if it is going on from the more acute to the chronic stage, the patient will present with an overactive detrusor and classically with detrusor sphincter dyssynergia. Eurodynamically, you'll find this picture, detrusor overactivity with overactivity of the sphincter, the classical sign of detrusor sphincter dyssynergia. This puts at risk the upper urinary tract, the diverticular, pseudodiverticular, trabecular, and reflux. And some of your patients special lesion level at the level of T6 or above may develop autonomic dysreflexia. Autonomic dysreflexia is defined as a systolic pressure increase of more than 20 millimeter mercury. Autonomic dysreflexia, you have the full bladder, you have a stimulus, also including um, bladder filling with your dynamics, bladder filling during your daily activities, but also sexual activity may be a stimulus, your cystoscopy may be a stimulus. 
there is the afferent stimulus going up here, it will be a massive sympathetic response leading to vasoconstriction, inducing hypertension. There will be bivaroreceptors signaling to the brain. The heart rate will slow down, but the descending inhibitory signals will be blocked due to the spinal cord injury. It means that the increase of systolic blood pressure may be associated with heart rate changes, with headache and blurred vision and feeling of anxiety, with perspiration, piloerection, warm skin and flushing, and this typically above the lesion because of the vasodilatation, and with cold and pale skin typically below the lesion because of vasoconstriction. But be aware, not all of your patients with autonomic dysreflexia will be symptomatic. It does not mean that all of these patients have any symptoms. It may be silent autonomic dysreflexia. But if you don't realize this, it may also silent autonomic dysreflexia be a life-threatening situation. When you go for urodynamics, it may be a picture like this. Here you see the systolic blood pressure, the diastolic blood pressure, then the heart rate, the EMG, detrusor, um, over, um, the detrusor pressure, and here the filling volume. See here the systolic blood pressure blood pressure at the baseline 120. It is increasing up to 190 in this situation. The diastolic is also increasing 82 to 113. The heart rate is decreasing up to 47 here. And the detrusor pressure, it is a detrusor overactivity with the increasing detrusor pressure, the blood pressure increases. This is a life-threatening situation. You need to stop your urodynamic exam, empty immediately the bladder. But be aware, this is not only a phenomenon what happens during your urodynamic exam. It is also happening several times a day when the bladder is filling. You need to treat this patient. Otherwise, this patient is at risk, not because of the bladder problems, but because of the cardiovascular system. In the case that we have a low lesion, it means a sacral or infrasacral lesion, the typical urodynamic pattern is a hypo or acontractile detrusor and a normal and underactive sphincter. In conclusion, whatever you do with your spinal cord injured patient, the aims are to protect the upper urinary tract and to achieve urinary continence. Thank you.